in this video we will be discussing about the transfer of that property basically immovable property that if you remember so let's check out what is meaning of transfer of property as per the section 5 of the transfer of property act 1882 transfer of property means an act by which a living person conveys property in present or in future to one or more living persons or to himself or and one or more other living persons and to transfer of property is to perform such act. I believe this definition is really complex and lengthy for you to understand but don't worry we will just break this into different parts and then try to understand. I saying transfer of property means an act by which a living person. So this is an act through which a living person, living person means it could be anything, means it could be a human being, it could be a corporate that is company, it could be an association, it could be a firm, it could be a trust. So everything can be considered as living person because you know that all these things associations, corporations, company, firms, trust everything is just a legal person under the law. So all such things can sell the property on its own name and can buy the property on its own name. So living person is everything. In present or in future conveys property in present or in future means conveys means transfer basically giving selling exchanging or whatever the things we will discuss later so in the present so if I am selling my property just selling just now giving my giving its possession to you just now but if it is for the future then though we are making agreement today but the real possession of my property will go to you in future whatever the time we will fix in the agreement based on that maybe after one month or maybe after one year so depending on that agreement so it could be either in the present context or it could be either in future context to one or more living persons means you can sell your property to one person or more than one person a few people jointly can buy so that is depending upon the thing or to himself and one or more other living persons. To himself, this is again difficult. You cannot sell the property which is already yours. But what is meaning of himself here? Himself means that if you are the sole owner of some property, then of course it is impossible to sell that property to yourself. And there is no fun even to just selling such kind of property. So, in case if that property belongs to some more people, it is a joint property or maybe in some other condition, then you can sell that property to yourself or to yourself or some other people as well jointly. So this is the definition of transfer of property according to section 5 of the Transfer of Property Act. I believe you must understood this. So, in brief, you can say that transfer of property means giving the property one person to another person, means there is change in ownership. Just now, someone else was the owner of this property and now someone else is the owner of this property. So, that is transfer of property. Who are the living persons? Already we have discussed about the things that who are the living person, but what law says that is as per the provision living person includes a company or association or body of individuals whether incorporated or not but nothing here in content shall affect any law for the time being in force relating to transfer of property or by companies associations or bodies of individuals so don't go through the lengthy definitions or lengthy language rather it means as said living persons could be anything whether it is association, firm, trust, corporation, so anything because these are the entities that is considered as 
legal person under the law and it has the right to buy the property on its own name and to sell the property on its own name. Now the next topic that we have in this video is that is what are the means of transfer of property. We are talking about the transfer of property. So under this heading we will be discussing that what are the ways through which a property can be transferred. So that is sell, you can sell it out, lease, you can give it on rent to someone, gift, you can also gift, mortgage, that is the new term basically because that is not in this syllabus, so we will not discuss that mortgage, but that is one of the ways keep in mind. And the last one is exchange, so we have basically four topics, that is sell, lease, gift and exchange. That is the mode of transfer of the property. Now the next topic that we have, who can transfer the property? So it means who has the right to transfer the property, to sell the property, to gift the property. So now let's check it out. As per section 7 of Transfer of Property Act, every person who has attained the age of 18 and of sound mind pay attention, we will discuss, don't worry, competent to contract and entitled to transferable property or authorized to dispose of transferable property not his own is competent to transfer such property either wholly or in part and either absolutely or conditionally in the circumstances to the extent and in the manner allowed and prescribed by any law for the time being in force. Again this is very much difficult sentence because it's too lengthy but again we will break into different parts and then try to understand. First it is saying keep in mind what we are discussing who are competent to transfer the property. So the first thing that you keep in mind the person who has to be a major means he must 18 plus of age. A person who is supposed to be less than 18, he or she has no right to transfer the property, to make the contract basically. So the first criteria is the person must be of 18 or 18 plus age. The second one is sound mind, means an insane person cannot transfer the property. So he must be of sound mind, he can judge the things, what is right, what is wrong. So these two properties are essential regarding the person who is supposed to be selling. The next clause what saying just check it out or authorized to dispose of transferable property not his own is competent to transfer such property means that is saying that let us understand it with an example means a person A who is the real owner of some property say C. The property is C and the person A is the real owner. But what A did, A has given the power of attorney to B to just take care of that property, that is the C property and given all the rights, whatever he wants he can do. So in such a condition, though B is not real owner of that property, that is C, but B can sell that property because he has been given the power to sell that. So in a condition when if it is not yours but you have given the power of attorney then you can sell it out. So that is the point saying here. The next point that is saying is competent to transfer such property either wholly or in part. What does it mean that depending upon your choice and all you can just transfer the whole property or in part. Means if you have the 5 acres of land you can transfer or sell only 2 acres, only 3 acres or you can trans transfer the whole property, all 5 acres. Next is and either absolutely or conditionally means you just sold it out or that is absolutely or you gave someone on lease that is conditional. So on lease you essentially gave for certain period of time, not the permanently, not the absolutely. Likewise, in the circumstances to the extent and in the manner allowed and prescribed by any law for the time being in force. So now I believe you must understood. Nevertheless, we will check it again in brief. 
the first point that is saying that the person who is selling must be 18 plus of age must be of sound mind and only then will be competent to sell or transfer the property the third point is simply saying that you are not the real owner nonetheless you have given the power of attorney even then you can sell it out or transfer that property and again the fourth point saying that you can sell it the whole property or in the part next point saying you can sell it absolutely means permanently you sold it out or you can give it conditionally that is on lease so for certain period of time or whatever the agreement is of such type so this is basically the meaning of this section 7 of transfer of property act i believe you must understood now now let's check out the next point the person who transfers the property is called the transferor and the person to whom the transfer is made is called the transferee so now you need to keep in mind two terms that is transferor who is just transferring the property and transferee who is receiving the property now the next point is how can property be transferred what does it mean that this is talking about the basically procedure what is the procedure that you can buy or sell the property so that you can make it enforceable in nature otherwise you might be cheated so it talking about in that sense so let's check it out though as per the section 9 of the transfer of property act a transfer of property may be made without writing in every case in which a writing is not expressly required by law this section 9 simply saying that if law is not essentially asking you your transfer of property must be in written then you can transfer your property orally as well and that is as valid as written one so it's not like that orally transfer of property cannot be accepted but if law please pay attention but if law prescribes that it must be in written then oral transfer won't be valid and we will check that so keep in mind now let's check it out the written transfer of the property however there are some distinctively defined mode of transfer of property as the mode of transfer of property varies according to the value of property if the value of property is more than 100 rupees then transfer has to be made only by registered instrument see the law prescribing here if the property worth of 100 and more than that then it has to be registered means it has to be in written otherwise it won't be valid so, so section 9 is saying that it could be either written or it could be either orally so if your property say worth of 90 rupees then you can transfer it in the written form as well as in oral form so there you have the freedom to choose whether written or oral but if your property is more than of 100 rupees then you don't have the choice otherwise it won't be the valid so in order to make it valid transaction you need to make the transaction or transfer of property in written essentially so this is the point saying here next point is registration of the instrument is an essential legal formality because see as we have studied regarding the features of the property that is it is enforceable means you you should have some proof otherwise how you will claim that this is yours so in order to claim on that property you should have some evidence and the registry kind of thing is the evidence that its record is maintained with the government as well as you have the document as well as records maintained in the government office that who is the owner of that property so this is the value of the registration so no cheating is there now if the property is tangible and the value of the property is less than 100 irrespective of the value of the property then transfer has to be made only by delivery okay whereas for intangible property irrespective of the value of the property transfer has to be made only by registered instrument 
what does it mean that it is just talking about two types of property the first one is tangible and tangible property if it is less than 100 then irrespective of the value of the property then transfer has to be made only by delivery means what means there is no written kind of thing is required if it is worth of less than 100 rupees that is regarding the tangible property so once you deliver the things your property to someone and orally said that it is his or hers then you are no more the owner of that property secondly in case of intangible property then irrespective of the value of the property transfer has to be made only by registered instrument example of intangible property is shares bonds so you cannot transfer your share your bonds orally irrespective of its value whatever it is maybe of 10 rupees only but you have to do it in written form so intangible property has to be transferred through written form or basically through registered instrument so intangible property has to be transferred through registered instrument now it is clear what is tangible and what is intangible and how it could be transferred now the next point is a registered instrument has to be attested at least by two persons who are parties to the transfer what does it mean that if you are buying a property then while registering while registering that property two eyewitnesses are required and on that paper those two eyewitnesses will sign there okay so that is another essential feature of registered instrument so what the provision is saying that let's check it out attestation means affixing the signature in the registered instrument instrument do not get confused with the term instrument just you can understand it basically document the witnesses should mark their signature too on the instrument with an intention to attest see the kind of legal language is with an intention to attest means it's not like something like someone forcing him or her to sign on that paper he or she must come willingly so he must be signing with his own interest and wish no forcibly okay now that is the point of registered instrument and attestation now the next point is what are the essential elements of a valid transfer this is another important topic that you need to pay attention in order to understand the transfer of the property so what are the essential elements that can make your transfer valid in a transfer of property the transfer should be between two or more living persons and now I believe you must understand what is meaning of living persons so there must be two persons one is seller and one is buyer the property that is going to be transferred should be free from encumbrance what is meaning of encumbrance that is hindrance of any form so there shouldn't be so there wouldn't be any kind of problem with that property so it has to be free from all sorts of problem and be of a transferable in nature so it must be transferable in nature there are certain types of property that cannot be transferred then you cannot do that legally the next point is the transfer shouldn't be for an unlawful object or an unlawful consideration what does it mean that if there is an unlawful object like pistol bomb that is not allowed so you cannot make transfer of that because that is illegal and of course not unlawful consideration consideration simply means the money basically when we will discuss the contract we will discuss that what is consideration so you can in brief understand that it is talking about the money so consideration shouldn't be unlawful so it's not like that if you supply me six pieces of pistol then I will give you this unit of land so it cannot be like that because that is unlawful again the next point is the transferor who transfers the property must be competent to make the transfer 
we have already discussed this point that person must be 18 plus and of sound mind both because a minor cannot contract so he cannot transfer the property the second one be entitled to the transferable property so property must be intransferable in nature be authorized to dispose of the property if the property is not his own property again we have discussed this point remember the power of attorney if this property is not yours in such a condition you have been given the power of attorney then you can transfer or else you cannot so the transfer should be made according to the appropriate mode of transfer so it shouldn't be something or anything illegal in that whether consideration whether the object you are transferring everything has to be legal and of course the mode of transfer that has to be also legal necessary formalities like registration attestation registration means just making it registered and attestation means eyewitnesses remember etc should be complied with so in order to make it valid you have to follow all these procedures the last elements of valid transfer is in the case of a conditional transfer please pay attention in the case of conditional transfer where an interest is created on the fulfillment of a condition the condition shouldn't be illegal immoral impossible or opposed to public policy so what does it mean that let's understand it with an example suppose I have an apartment and I am saying here conditional transfer I want to not sell it out rather rent it out so I will be applying certain conditions so one who is interested in taking that apartment on rent he must needs to fulfill certain conditions like no late coming like you have to pay the maintenance of that apartment or such conditions you have to pay the rent by fifth of every month so there are certain conditions that i can put being the owner of that apartment i can put but those conditions i am saying here but those conditions shouldn't be illegal i cannot put such kind of conditions that if you come with some drugs only then i will allow you to enter in the apartment this is illegal because to keep the drug is not legal so this is illegal as well as immoral secondly i cannot put certain conditions supposed to be impossible i will allow you when you purchase say when you purchase a bmw car only then i will allow you to enter in my apartment so it is something like that impossible conditions so I cannot put such kind of conditions. So in conditional transfer, I have the right to put the condition, but it has to be legal, moral, possible. And that is of course in the, and of course in the favor of public policy. So these are the elements of valid transfer. Now we have two doctrines. The first one is doctrine of election. What does it mean that according to the principle of doctrine of election that is section 35 of transfer of property act a party to the transfer cannot accept as well as reject in a single transaction. Pretty confusing. Cannot accept as well as reject in a single transaction. In other words while claiming advantage of an instrument the burden of the instrument should also be accepted. So what does it mean that let's understand it with an example say I have an apartment I want to sell it out and you want to purchase but with that apartment there is some liability regarding you need to pay the maintenance. So if you want to buy that apartment and you say that after buying that once you become the owner still I need to pay the maintenance of that apartment so it is not possible. So one thing you can accept and second thing you won't accept so this is not possible in one transaction you have to accept both the conditions or neither of them 
You cannot something like this, I will accept this and I will not this. Not at all. So you have to accept either both or not anyone. So that is the meaning of doctrine of election. The second doctrine that we have and the last topic basically of this video that is doctrine of list pendence. What does it mean that if see any property again I am giving the example of my property that is I have an apartment and that is basically that is disputed between me and my brother. So my brother just file a lawsuit basically the partition suit on that apartment. So it is a disputed apartment and the litigation is going on on that apartment. So in the meantime neither me nor my brother can sell or lease it out or do anything with that property. So until the litigation is going on both of us are not allowed to do anything with that property that will remain as it is. Once the decision will come only then we can think what to do. So this is the meaning of list pendants. So this is all for this video that we have discussed so many points under the heading of transfer of property regarding the meaning of transfer of property, modes of transfer of property and the elements of a valid transfer of property. So we have discussed everything along with two doctrines. So see you in next video.